the format of being robot. While being in the small town of Dudley, known for its eccentric charm, there was a notorious flea market tucked away and forgotten about years later. One fateful day, I found myself at the supposed flea market, filled with cheap DVDs of movies and TV shows. A man, who works at this market, claimed to possess movies of exceptional quality. With a mixture of curiosity and skepticism, I approached him and purchased three DVDs, The Brave Little Toaster from 1987, Chicken Little from 2005, and Madagascar 3, Europe's Most Wanted from 2012. Upon returning to my home, I eagerly inserted the first DVD, The Brave Little Toaster, into my Xbox 360. To my dismay, the movie played in poor quality, distorted and filled with glitches. However, the strangeness unfolded, during a scene where the main characters end up at the workshop, filled with the ruined sorts of appliances. Suddenly, the screen abruptly cut to an unsettling emergency alert system message, warning of a civil danger. A chilling male narrator described unidentified serial killers, going around in local areas and whatnot. The message abruptly shifted to live-action security camera footage from a school hallway. Four terrified children ran in panic, while masked men in black suits and ski masks, mercilessly attacked and murdered them. The horrified teachers watched helplessly, as the brutal ordeal unfolded for what felt like an eternity, which went on for 30 minutes, leaving me disturbed and bewildered. The DVD soon ended without even resuming the film. Shaking off the unsettling experience, I reluctantly proceeded to play the second DVD, Chicken Little. Once again, the movie played in poor quality and distortion, and during a scene where Chicken Little, Abby, and Runt, ventured into an alien spaceship, that landed on a baseball court at night, the nightmare intensified. Without warning, the scene suddenly cut to an old cartoon from the 70s, revealing a young boy as the protagonist. Shockingly, he witnessed a gruesome sequence of events. Three hooded figures with red eyes, executed the boy's parents and younger sister with an imaginable brutality. The mother was dismembered with a chainsaw, the father was decapitated with a large machete, and the sister was burned alive using a blowtorch and gasoline. The scene concluded with the boy, receiving a fatal gunshot to the head. The screen then faded to a three-minute slideshow of photographs, depicting streets filled with lifeless bodies, accompanied by a distorted and off-key rendition of Beethoven's for Elise. The DVD abruptly ended without continuing the film, leaving me even more unsettled. With trepidation, I inserted the final DVD, Madagascar 3, Europe's Most Wanted. The movie played in poor quality, mildly distorted, and during a scene where Alex and Gia practiced their trapeze act at sunset, something enveloped the screen, and it scarred me even deeper. A live-action video replaced the animated film, showcasing a dimly lit bedroom, occupied by a 90s desktop computer, a chair, and a bed adorned with two pillows and a blanket. The only source of light emanated from a luxor lamp on the desk. The room's open door revealed an abyss of pure darkness, gradually revealing a ghastly gray face with black eyes, and a grotesquely elongated mouth. The video persisted for two agonizing minutes, before transitioning to a disturbingly low-quality scene, from the 1984 computer-animated short called, Snood and Muttley, by John Burden Jr. The distorted colors and warped audio of the short film, cast an ominous pall over the room. Following this, a torrent of disturbing videos and images flooded the screen. Scenes of death, animal cruelty, and twisted snippets of old cartoons, merged with distorted blood-curdling screams and disquieting ambient music. The DVD abruptly ended with the movie discontinued, and I feel extremely terrified, confused and enraged. Haunted by these malevolent visions, I endured a month of harrowing nightmares that invaded my sleep, leaving me in a constant state of dread. Desperate for answers and resolution, I eventually contacted the authorities, sharing the story of the pirate DVDs purchased from the dubious flea market. Acting swiftly, the police apprehended the seller, named Aaron Laurier, who is responsible for peddling the supposed collection of pirated movies and TV shows. It was revealed that he had sourced the disturbing content from the dark web of sorts. I'll heed my warning when you go around, and wanted to buy some entertainment for cheap prices. 
don't ever try to think of buying pirated movies and shows, either on VHS or DVD, from any ill-gotten barn in places like flea markets. You may not know what lies in those supposed low-quality and distorted copies. You would be lucky if you buy genuine and high-quality copies that are worth the investment in well-known stores. 